right here. So um, welcome to what to expect when you're adopting. Yeah, what to expect when you're expecting an adoption is kind of the theme of this. And thank you to those who have attend are attending. And we have Christina Corelli, who is a professional developer with McGraw-Hill um, here with us. Um, most of you know I'm Susan Henry, you've seen me around, but Christina, you'll start to see a lot more. She has another companion, Craig who, uh, Wilmore, who also is helping with professional development. And then we have Michael Turpin, who is our um, McGraw-Hill rep for Utah, or at least this area. And he is also on this um, virtual PD. So I'm going to just let Christina dig in and, and then answer questions along the way with you all. Oh, and um, at the end, we have a little uh, survey how you can get um, recertification points or whatever you're looking for out of this. And that'll be about 429 when we do that. So perfect. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, Susan, for that great intro. Hi, Canyons teachers. My name is Christina, your curriculum specialist with Wonders 2023. We're so excited to launch your adoption. And today we're offering Bite Size PD. Now, you may have participated in the one prior with my colleague Craig, focusing on the science of reading, really the research based approach and evidence. Um, really grounded in evidence instruction. Today, we're actually gonna look at a little more of the instructional flow, the design and organization. Now, because this is bite-sized PD and only 30 minutes, it's going to be extremely overarching. So we need to make it apply to everyone. So we're gonna be focusing on your four key texts, the close reading routine, the organization of that, as well as how writing meets reading. You know, um, anywhere I go to, um, in this beautiful country, we experience this gap in, in districts all across the way of reading scores here and writing here. So one thing you're going to see with Wonders 2023 is that we bridge that gap. Whatever we read about, we write about. Because when we write about reading, it increases our comprehension and what we're able to do with text. So let's talk about this instructional design for a moment. Let me just get my mouse on the right I got a second monitor this year and it's my best friend, but also my nemesis. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna be calling out a few page numbers for you to look for when you do get your teacher's edition. I'm also gonna be calling out some resources to look for. So even though you may not have everything in front of you yet, um, start making a list. And this is just to give you the gist, give you an idea. Are you gonna be a wonders expert after watching this recording? Uh, no, but it's kind of like the first read, right? You're gonna have an overarching sort of gist of the main text, what we do with them, what it looks like, and just some key resources to look for. Um, so first thing I want to point you to as we're looking at the instruction is that overarching planning page. It's a two-page spread. It's called the unit overview. So write that down. The unit overview is in your teacher's edition. It is a two-page spread, pages T, 1A, and B, and it lays out your entire unit. Now, one thing I'd like to call out right here is that first grade and up, you all have six units over the year, six weeks in each unit. But in those six weeks, you'll see here on my page that week six is actually in red. You see that extend, connect, and assess after week five? You actually only have five weeks of new instruction. Now, Kindy, you're different as you should be. Um, kindergarten, you have 10 units, three weeks each. OK, so look for that unit overview page. What it's going to lay out for you is, are all the outcomes for reading and writing. It's also going to show you the key skills trace on the right. So another thing you might want to write down is spiraling. We spiral our instructions. So you might notice when you're flipping through the lessons, gosh, this moves us at a quick pace. I'm seeing five, 10 minute lessons and I'm moving and grooving. That is intentional. That is on purpose. In Wonders, we teach in short bursts of focus instruction because we need to engage students and keep them with us. Because if they're not with us, they're not learning. So we always spiral through those skills through not just the week, through the unit, and even um, unit to unit and grade to grade. Okay, And that is really how students learn best. So upper grades, when you come to standardized testing season, gone are the days of pausing your instruction for three weeks before state testing. Don't do that. <laughs> you don't have to. With wonders, if you tr trust the fidelity of the program and the sp embedded spiraling, your students are going to be adequately prepared for that high stakes test. 
So make sure you check out that overarching planning on that unit overview page with that key skills trace, which is going to show you when you first introduce it, when you revisit it, and then when you assess it. Now, if you want to look a little more granularly, we are um, organized by tech sets. I'll talk about that. You want to look for your suggested weekly planner. This is in the front matter of every single tech set in your teacher's edition. So the suggested planner comes in digital, and we'll talk about that in our next session. There's some really cool things you can do with it to customize it. Um, but if you look at your weekly planner, one thing you're going to see right off the bat are at the top, you're going to see that academic vocabulary and spelling words. But look at the color coding. One thing you want to get familiar with as you're experiencing and learning to use wonders is our color coding. So blue is always reading. And green is always writing. And you'll actually see that in the student editions as well. When you do get your materials, when you flip through that student interactive consumable text, um, you're going to see the color coding right along the top for your students as well. So get to know that um, it's going to help you kind of get organized and, and really navigate that teacher's edition. And these front matter pages, I always say front matter matters. <laughs> it has really pertinent information for you as you get started because implementing no matter what program it is or what content, right? It can be overwhelming. So those two pages are really going to be your best friend as you get going. Now, in the upper grades, when I say upper grades, it's really like first grade and up. Remember when grade three was the transitional year, by the way, now it's grade one. But starting in grade one, you have these tabs in your teacher's edition. If you turn to that blue tab, you're going to see the student outcomes page. It's actually on page T2 in the kindergarten unit one teacher's edition. The student outcomes page is taking that planner week and going a little more granular, showing you all of those student outcomes. So one thing you might want to write down and remember, the student outcomes, first of all, that's for you and your own teacher clarity, so you know what to focus in on. But there are some red check marks, and if you look at the top of the page, you have a key. A red check mark means a tested skill. This is really helpful for when we're short on time, right, when we have to make instructional decisions. OK, um, so look for that. And, but you're going to hit other things because remember, Wonders is a spiraling program. So you might see other items that students have already experienced or maybe you're previewing something for next time. So definitely check out the student outcomes page. Those are three key pages that are in your teacher's edition that I want you to look for as you start getting familiar with the instructional design of Wonders. Now, I know Craig talked about this in the last session, but we really are and we always have been built on and grounded in the science of reading. That instructional um, research framework from the last 50 years, we haven't changed what we've done because we've always aligned that. And you might be familiar with this image, right? Scarborough's rope. Well, today we're going to focus on the red part of that rope, that language comprehension. And we're going to do that through your tech set. So once your materials start coming, your instructional flow is going to be organized around a text set, a text set that's connected by that essential question in the center on my screen. This is a first grade example. So this first grade example is what insects do you know about? Here we have a great science connection. So students are going to move from a read aloud and foundational skills to shared reading, authentic literature and paired selections, and even aligned small group instructional materials. What's powerful about the tech set is you are done Pinteresting, no more teacher pay teachering, stop spending your own money. You don't need to anymore because we've done the work for you. All of these resources focus on the same thing, the um, foundational skill, the um, skill and strategy and comprehension, and that science or social studies connection. That's really powerful for, for primary because we know that is quickly scrapped from our day, right? When we run out of time. So you're going to be moving through this tech set in primary. In the teacher, in the student companion, look for the table of contents. This shows you sort of the flow and the order of those texts. Notice the color coding called out even for the students. And notice when you see a blue shared read, what do you see right after it? Writing. We read, then we write. We read, then we write. At the end of the unit, students are be able to, going to be able to bring it all together, do some reflection, some real world connections with science and social studies, and really reflect and work on those metacognitive skills, reflecting on their own learning and evaluating themselves, and even setting goals for the next unit. K-1, your tech sets are one week of instruction. So you're moving through those key texts, 
over a week. But in upper grades, as it should be, we're dealing with more complex and robust, authentic literature. And we're doing very um, uh, rigorous things with it. <laughs> so you're going to be spending more time. You're going to see two-week tech sets. So look for these table of contents. These are actually in the student's reading writing companion. We want them to know the purpose of a shared read and anchor text and a paired selection. Because in wonders, your students are your learning partners. So if we were looking at upper grades, here's a third grade example. Notice the essential question here is, what makes different animals unique? So there is some great vertical alignment and connection with the essential questions. If there is an essential question about helping out the community in kindergarten, Dollars to Donuts says that there's the same, a little more um, developmentally appropriate for fifth grade. So that's powerful, right? The essential question, what makes different animals unique? Again, look familiar, even in third through fifth grade, they're gonna move through a text set. But one thing we wanna clarify for Canyon teachers is, you have four key texts, the read aloud, the shared read, the authentic anchor text that lives in this beautiful literature collections book. And then the fourth text, the paired selection, because we not only learn within genre, we read across genre, because even starting in kindergarten, our standards require us to do that. And it's an expectation all the way down. So those four key texts, we are never sacrificing. So let's look at how that unfolds. We launch with our essential question. Here's that essential question. This is an image straight from the student text. One thing that's beautiful is everything that's embedded here. So no more running to the copy machine, five minutes left of your prep period when the kids are coming back from PE. We've all had that day, right? So it's all there for the students ready to go. It's digital. You'll have all the audio support, annotation features. We'll talk about that next time we meet on the 31st when we talk about the digital navigation and tools. So we launch with an essential question. We always start with conversations and building vocabulary and establishing what we know already. Now, we're not going to build too much knowledge. You know, back in the day, we used to spend 45 minutes activating prior knowledge. <laughs> But with close reading, which I'm going to talk about, you actually build knowledge across the text set. Because of the connectivity of it, um, they build knowledge really, really well. In fact, we scored perfectly with Ed Reports starting in grade, I think, two or three. Um, I mean, we're green, we scored green and everything, but perfect scores in how we build knowledge because of our connected text set. So you'll, of course, you'll have what makes different. We'll talk about that. Um, so we launch with that essential question and we start with a read aloud every single grade, every single grade benefits from the power of oral language at the top. Because as students, you know, if anyone with kids knows, they listen before they speak and they speak before they read and write. So we follow what is developmentally appropriate and how they learn. So you're going to have high quality interactive read alouds. Of course, in kindergarten and first grade, we're going to revisit some listening comprehension through the week. But in the upper grades, we always launch with that read aloud. It comes digitally as well. But what's nice is it's not just a passive experience for the students, okay? This is a read aloud and a think along. So this has a lot of bang for our buck. And here's why you don't want to skip it. Number one, I'm modeling a fluent read. Number two, I'm modeling how to think as an independent reader and think through a story. But the students are interacting with me. They're not just sitting and listening. They're working through it with me as my learning partner. The read aloud, if you actually look at the instruction when you get your teacher's edition, it is very intentional. It actually introduces or previews the main genre for the week and a skill or a strategy. So it's a little preview. There is power in previewing skills. It's kind of a lost art, previewing and pre-teaching and first exposure. That's how flip learning came to be right? Giving them that exposure up front a little and then delving into the, the um, research proven instruction. So we start with that oral language and that read aloud. Now, as we get into our text set, starting with that shared read, one page, I've got to call this out. And I know maybe Craig discussed this resource, the instructional routine handbook. Pages 86 and 87, it's kind of sad that I know that, but <laughs> it's because <laughs> they're my favorite pages. They outline, it's literally a roadmap for you of the whole text set of the close reading, what we do with each text and how it unfolds through the week or two weeks. It's gonna give you other supports and strategies such, such as like if you wanna create anchor charts, right? 
or do some um, visual learning with some vocabulary and um, frayer models and things like that. So I always point teachers to, to this close reading roadmap on page 86 and 87 is the reason. It's the why we read closely. Complex text. We want our students marinating in worthy, authentic, complex literature if they're gonna be real world readers. And that is why we read things closely. And one thing I just wanna clarify, close reading is not something you're gonna see called out in your standards. It's a strategy, it's a practice, it's a procedure. It's proven. I actually have a great article. It's an oldie but a goodie by Dr. Doug Fisher. I can send you, um, Susan, to share with your um, participants. But the complexity of the text is why we have to read, reread, and really analyze the text at a higher level and deeper level. So we outlined for you the three layers of text complexity. Quantitative, which you are most likely familiar with. Lexile, DRA, guided reading levels. But we have to be careful about solely relying on that because that's tunnel vision. Here's why. Did you read Of Mice and Men in high school? Can I ask you something? Uh, would you give that to a third grader? Probably not, not appropriate, right? The themes, the topics, it's just not good for a third grader, right? But if you were focusing solely on Lexile, you would. So we highlight for the teacher qualitative measures. There's seven reasons that texts are complex, ranging from um, sentence structure, prior knowledge, genre. There's other obstacles that get in the way for readers. It's not just about Lexile. And then finally, reader and task considerations. What's their environment? What are they bringing to the table? What do they already know? How do they focus, right? That's really what the student brings to the experience. And then we always in this resource show you what does success look like? What are students, what are you going to see, hear, and feel in that classroom as you're reading things closely and digging into complex text? So I've already highlighted for you three pages in your teacher's edition as you get planning, but also this instructional routine handbook, pages 86 and 87. So the close reading routine, what is it? Now, close reading is not new. It's been around, but I have to tell you, even teachers that believe they've been doing close reading, when we dig into it, they actually aren't. There's a lot of misconception, misperception out there of what close reading is. I want you to picture a staircase. And that staircase represents an increase in complexity of the questions you pose students. And they're connected. Meaning when I do surface level questions or when I see red read questions that are called out in your teacher's edition and the student edition as well, by the way, the first week of school, definitely we want to teach the students what the close reading routine is. If they're going to be your learning partner, they need to know what a red read question is. Basic level, DOK one, maybe two. Who, what, where, when, why questions. They can point to it right on the page. So this is where we used to teach all the time. Unfortunately, the testing, right? When kids hit third grade and they're taking that state test, do you know 70% of the questions, any text dependent question on a standardized high stakes test, it's actually at a DOK two or three. So we have to create alignment here. We have to practice how we play. There's a reason that Broadway stars do dress rehearsals. There's a reason that NFL teams do scrimmage games. We need to create alignment and mirror the environment. So your students are gonna spend quite a bit of time in reread questions. These are analyzing text, craft, features, um, why the author did what they did. This is really how the text works. And then integrate, that's the highest level. This is, can they connect it to something else? Can they take the text in their classroom and connect it and take it outside the four walls of the building? Can they connect it to arts, humanities, science, social studies, and discoveries? Because if we can't connect literacy to our real world, there's no relevance. What's the point? So to, so to kind of summarize this, and especially for when you teach your students, read questions. What does the text say? Reread questions. What does the text mean and how does it work? Blue questions. How does the text connect to me, multimedia, other texts in the world? That is the close reading routine. And what's really cool is the red questions connect to the green questions, connect to the blue questions. We build stamina moving up that staircase. So we're actually, even our core program, although it's robust and the depth of complexity is there, you're actually, we scaffold the entire process for you.
if you follow the close reading routine. And you're gonna see it called out right in the student's reading writing companion. So you're gonna move through all the red questions on day one, and then we're gonna go back and revisit the story. Now, when you see the word reread, traditionally reread has meant rereading the whole story front to back Monday through Friday. That's not what rereading is. In rereading, we're gonna focus in on a certain part of the text. We're gonna find text evidence. We're gonna use a gradual release of responsibility. You'll see all these routines, by the way, that I mentioned in your instructional routine handbook. And then after they experience reading and rereading that shared read, the second story in their four main texts, they're going to learn vocabulary. Look for the vocabulary routines in that instructional routine handbook. It's define, example, ask. It's not just about learning definitions anymore. And alongside that, science of reading talks about not just learning definitions, word analysis, multifaceted vocabulary instruction, including um, word solving, word attack strategies, Greek and Latin um, prefixes, Latin roots, um, morphology. This is giving your students tips, tricks, and tools so that when they come across a word on their own that they don't know that they have an attack strategy. And then finally, whatever we read about, we write about. And the responder reading prompt is always connected to the lessons you've been doing leading up to this along the way. So you'll actually see the students are using their notes, their graphic organizers. They get to turn back in this reading writing companion and actually use it as a reference tool. But we don't leave them hanging because we're going to give them sentence starters. Have you ever had the brilliant student, great reader, but when it comes to writing, they cannot get the pencil to the paper and they're staring at the ceiling? How about a springboard with sentence starters in every single grade? And a reminder of the grammar skill that they're learning during language arts to be able to practice some authentic application. Then they're going to move to their third story. That's that authentic anchor text in the literature collections book. And I really encourage you when you get this to look at that table of contents. Award-winning exemplars, Caldecott's, Newberries. Here in third grade, it's Martina the Beautiful Cockroach, a Cuban folktale. We're also going to experience the paired read. And the paired read is when we bring in a new genre. So we're going to practice and apply those skills we learned first in that shared read. We're going to read Martina answering some basic level questions. We're on the bottom level of that staircase. And then we're gonna reread Martina, but it's gonna take us a little longer and we need to use some routines to build this knowledge because this is a robust piece of text. It's authentic. And we're doing some grade level standards with it, right? So this question, how does the author help you visualize? That's a hard question. So we have our citing evidence routine. Talk, cite, write. You're gonna see it. Now in primary, you might see listen, cite, write, or look at a big book, cite, write. Regardless, when students talk first and then write, you're giving them a leverage point, right? Because if they can talk about it, they can write about it. And of course, whatever we read about, we write about. So you'll see another responder reading. So you see that flow, right? We read, we reread, we write about it. We read, we reread, we write about it. Always providing those sentences. And then finally, when we get to the end of that text set, we're gonna make connections to science, social studies, arts, humanities. We still use the citing evidence routine, even in kindergarten, they're connecting the text they read to maybe a song or a poem. The students are gonna need your support with this. It is very rigorous. Now we can't have reading without writing and writing I'm gonna talk about really quickly, major overarching. K1, you have a weekly writing practice skill, writing sentences where we use the shared read and the anchor text as examples high quality examples, but you'll notice here in first grade, we're actually introducing traits here, concluding sentences, descriptive details. When you get your teacher's edition for my primary teachers, you're going to look for in the green section developmental writing, because it's actually gonna lay out for you the steps and progression that students learn writing, so that when you conference with students, you can give some individual goals. If they did this well, great, let's give them a new goal, chunk it out. We tend to give students a lot of writing goals at one time, they can't process that. Remember chunking? We're gonna do that here with the developmental writing outlined for you in your teacher's edition. K1, you will experience process writing. However, gradual implementation. Kindergarten, every other unit for a few days. First grade, every unit for two weeks. And in the upper grades, you're gonna experience not just process writing, but performance-based writing. That is extended writing process using, um, we're gonna analyze rubrics. We're going to analyze new reads and use examples to learn great traits of writing, but also build knowledge to be able to answer a prompt. 
So I get to read some fresh reads, analyze the writing, identify what makes it powerful, you know, writer's craft, so that I can then do some writing of my own. Have you ever had a student score zero on a state test because they did not write to the prompt? <gasps> so now we're actually building up to the prompt. We're actually studying and marinating in it for a few days before they even start the process writing. That is performance-based writing. So it's really a nice bang for your buck. On the recording, you can pause this and take a screenshot. Performance-based writing starts in second grade, but we gradually increase it. So there are, everyone's doing process writing with mentor text, but we gradually move that performance-based writing at the end of the year in second. But look, by fifth grade, they're doing performance-based writing all year because that is what is going to be required of them as they take their state test. Now, we are going to be focusing on digital in our next session. And in our next session, I do have a demo code here. I know Mike can drop it in the chat. Mike, I didn't get it changed in time when you sent the Utah one. They're the same. You can use either one, right, Mike? I mean, I don't think it really matters. What's nice about the demo code is you can play around. Um, I would definitely want you to go search in the upper right. There's a search bar. You can search instructional routine handbook to get those. Remember, you're going to go get page 86 and 87, right, everybody? 86 and 87. So that you can really familiarize yourself with the close reading routine. Um, what was the other thing I want to call out? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so we'll, we'll dug into, we'll kind of go the same flow, but we'll do it digitally next time. And I'll show you kind of where to find things. Now, there's one thing I do want to show you in this session because we are talking instruction, right? And if we're talking instruction, you might need to look at your teacher's edition. And if you don't have your teacher's edition yet, you know, so let me just show you a quick click path. If you go to the resource tab, once you're in that demo code and you click on resource library, if you scroll all, Oh, just kidding. If you scroll all the way down in the resource library, I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> um, it says teacher resources and then there's teacher editions and you can actually print like the PDF if you wanted to. Okay, I don't know why, what it's doing there. So my, my apologies, no worries. <laughs> um, I think that is all I have for you today. Um, thank you, Canyons. That was fast, quick and dirty. Bite size PD, that's what thank it is. You. Christina, <laughs> I I put the um, I put the Canyons U if you want the relicense for credit and the bite size PD page in the chat for everyone if you are applying for that. And also thank you, Michael, for putting in the demo account Utah Wonders 2023. The password and the username are the same. Um, you can also do the Explore Wonders, although the one that we have has um, with the Utah Wonders 2023 has the uh, Wonder Works in there because we're mm. on as well. Yeah. Yes. So any any quick questions for Christina or Michael or myself? And I think my just while we're thinking there, I think my one um, piece of advice is like it's going to take you the first year of learning alongside your students. So right now we're just getting the gist of things. So we have to be kind to ourselves and give ourselves some grace. Absolutely. Sarah, did you have anything or Susan? I'm just impressed with how it's flowing with our learning of the letters platform, all the stuff we're learning in there and how it is um, going together. That makes me a little excited to hang in there with letters. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, so just it was it was aha moments. I think that's a good selling point for letters and for wonders. I'm impressed mm -hmm. with that I was on the, the meeting with the adoption and now I'm having a refresher course of what we crammed in in December that I'm impressed with that. I think the third graders, it'll be good. It'll be good for us. Yes. And I fidelity agree. is the biggest thing though. We got to make that huge change and really go for it or we're going to have some holes. So yeah. Yes. Oh, I did drop that Doug Fisher article. I believe that's the right one in the chat box if anyone wants yes. to grab it. I'm aware of this article, so that's good. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's a good reminder uh, mm -hmm. as well. So um, Sarah or Amy, anything that you want to add? I think it was very well done. It makes me feel a little bit more uh, at ease about what we will be working with. Um, my one thing, and it wouldn't be for you, it'd be more for Susan in reference to I guess I'm still trying to wrap my brain around 
what components and how it's going to work with the 95% core. Yes, we're working on that and we're going to be meeting with the Wonders team and I have met, I'm met with 95 and we have some plans and I just would like their feedback. Um, awesome. I, as I've looked at it and this is my first glance, um, the scope and sequence are very similar. You teach first, right, Sarah, or is it second? Okay. Second. They're very similar. And one of the benefits is um, one will front load the other. And so that will make a more intense instruction, which we need with our, um, with, well, we're in a COVID slide. We're not supposed to say that, but I will. It's being recorded. Thank you. I appreciate and, that. We are, and our data shows it. And so we need to intensify over the next few years. And if you're finding you continue to need to intensify, you've got both programs there to support you. So you'll have all of the wonders materials. We haven't really cut anything out. Um, we went pretty much full bore. So you'll have all of those and they will be supportive with you with 95 and the other way around. So I think it'll be a good marriage. So good. there will be bumps. I, I can't not own that there's not going to be bumps. There's going to be, but sure. we will be able to work through it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Did you have something, Amy? I, I don't really have anything. I just was, I'm excited to see um, some of the practices that we've been trying to work on with close reading and using that and how that's going to play into wonders and also how the writing is going like right hand in hand and be able to be supported. And the pages looked awesome for supporting teachers on how to move from one thing to the next and across the week or the two weeks. So super excited about that. So here is a little aha, and I don't know if Leanne wants to add in, but our, our team has been teaching wonders, unit one, um, sequence one, unit, it depends on if you're first, so I'm just going to call it the sequence teaching of unit one. And um, every specialist has come back and said, uh, the teacher said to me, be careful of student ABC and look what they wrote. They, I mean, tough kids are writing really great stuff. And all, every single one of us have had that experience. And I have, I, I had kids when I did the read that were, be, were able to say we're doing things in chronological order because that was the skill. Um, they also were able to, um, write a lot about the chronological order and what was happening and using the transition words. And we are enhancing the teaching because we wanted teachers to see it straight from the manual. So it's not like we're adding other stuff in. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's purposeful. So kids are getting results even with the first little hit on, and it, it's pretty amazing. The other thing that we noticed is there is, like Christina said, there's a vertical alignment where every grade was doing something very similar. And so it makes for a nice um, way that a faculty can talk and that you can share ideas about how things work. And, um, and then I will go on record and say that when Christina was talking about um, how the text works, um, those DOK two and three questions, um, that was hard. And in honesty, we were trying to shove a lot into one session with the kids that we had chosen. However, it's rigorous, but I think that's good. We need rigor back. So uh, it's exciting. So yay. Thank you, Canyons. And yes, thank you, Christina, for being here. And Michael, Leanne, did you have anything to add before we close off tonight? Nope, not at all. It was good oh. to hear it. I felt like we were on the right track. <laughs> Oh, and there's one of our future Canyonites saying hi. Yeah, hi. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Christina. And thank you, participants. I know it takes extra time to come on this day and we'll post this um, for others to view later. And um, next week is the digital platform. So yep. um, we'll be working on it. And is that you, Christina, next yep. week? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. This will be the same link for next week. Perfect. I'll, I'll reassign that out to you and um, so that you can click on it in your calendar. Thanks I appreciate you all and what you're doing. Thank you so much.
Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.